Hello guys, we are cancelling the methodical analytical type of astrology. We will just justify the rules based on the charts and do the post fact analysis because according to some people on the YouTube comments, this is what we can do the best. So let's start today. Very interesting topic. Graha you da. So are you done or do you have just Graha you da? So this is quite important distinction. By the way, the last video on Sharpa Yoga got the numbers. Very successful first uh, place in that month. So I'm very happy uh, with that. And we'll try to do this video in the same format. So we'll be going through a few examples as usual. And we'll try to derive some lessons, how to approach the whole topic of the planetary war, which is the Graha Yuda. This is very interesting because the Sandhi, the combustion and the Graha Yuda, also the Panchanga Doshas qualify in this. Often we ignore those. We have some knowledge, we have some theory how they work, but uh, of course the most important is the debilitation, is the planet in Dushna now reflected by malefics, but those other things we tend to ignore. And this is not right because very often the affliction itself, when we are doing this triangle of Bhava, Bhavesha and Karaka to get the methodical understanding of what's going on in the chart, some one of these elements, it is enough when it is afflicted by combustion or Rasi Sandhi or Graha Yuda. Then we can qualify, yes, this point here is hit, it's afflicted. Since few years, I'm taking this Graha Yuda very seriously in my consultations. And uh, without that, sometimes we can ignore or totally omit the big part of the story or narrative of the client, querent, or uh, our uh, family member or friend. So often this is the center of the person's life. So let's go to the intro and then we'll start with some theory. Make sure to subscribe because in the future uh, uploads probably will be touching on this Rasi Sandhi, on this Panchanga Dosha and the combustion. So if you are into this traditional way of doing Jyotish, then you don't want to miss those videos. So in this video, we'll be sharing a few rules. You will learn uh, to be able to understand what Aria has really affected two very important rules. Uh, also one very important yoga formation without which you can miss the important essential point. Also, we'll be going through the impact on choosing the jam, taking into consideration the Yuda planets and how this is impacting the native and also what, uh, how it started or how it's ended uh, using also one very important special point. So to zoom out, the Graha Yuda is the part of um, affliction analysis or dosha analysis, we could say, but also it's very strongly connected to this Ayana Bala which is the um, estimation of uh, strength. We have uh, Shadbala, six important factors for strength analysis. Probably you know this most popular deep tadi avashta, which is about if the planet is exalted or debilitated or in own sign. And there are many other balas. This is uh, one whole year on this Parashara Jyotish course dedicated to that. It is written about this Yuda in the chapter 27 of Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra in the Ayanabala chapter. And all those rules are there related to Moon and Saturn, related to this um, Sun. For example, that we have to divide the Sun into half. Also in the second uh, book, we have a Shloka in the uh, ascetic yogas, Pravraja yogas. Uh, if there is a planetary war, the one in the north is winning. Mm -hmm. So this is also giving us understanding how to estimate which planet will win. Because if we have those two planets in difference of one degree, then we are talking about the Graha Yuda. In fact, there are three types of Yuda. Two are most popular, the Charakaraka Yuda and the Graha Yuda. Today we are speaking about the Graha Yuda. So it's not only that the planets are having the same degree, but can be in different houses or signs, but they have to be very close to each other. So in the same house and in the same sign, very close to each other, they are fighting for that place. And unfortunately, if two elements are close to each other, there is, as in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's said, 
there is some friction and this is causing the fight. How to declare the winner? So now this is becoming very easy. Compare the Ayana Bala. Just put your mouse on this sword icon. You will get these two numbers and the one which is higher is the winner. The one with the lower number will be the loser. He got the L. And we need to see which houses and which lords are related to that planet which is losing and then our analysis is starting. Now the question is, will that really manifest as some kind of fight in your life, right? Because Graha Yuda implies that there will be some big uh, fight. From my observation, it's not uh, so. So definitely we can say that uh, symbolically or conceptually there is the fight. The fight can happen on that idea or energy level, but how it will translate to what we perceive. If it's not related to those yoga of fights like third, sixth, from Lagna, Ruda, Mars, Karaka, all of these, you know, Badaka related to sixth, and all of these yogas related to litigations or some fight, we will have also one example related to that. Then it will probably just be affliction. So whatever lordship or whatever bhava is there, it will just hit. And uh, how it is hit, what will really happen, you need to employ all of those uh, surrounding elements to get the full picture. So let's go through these charts. The first one of Ryan Spencer. She was coming from reality, her family already. The mother was novelist, the father was uh, owner of the printer company. Some connection to this Mercury Mars must be there, right? It's showing the printing. In this chart, the Mars is a losing, so the Lagnador. So this is the case of you da, you're done. And Mercury here is the 8th Lord in the 11th. So this is the context of, uh, it could be either inheritance or it could be spouse wealth. We know that she uh, was married to the father of Diana and she didn't have a good relationship with her. We see 5th Lord in the 7th house, which could give some friction. This is the second spouse child because that Jupiter is also second Lord. And the death of the spouse, it's usually connected to the dispositor. Second Lord is in Taurus. We have two dispositors, Venus and Moon. Moon is more afflicted in the Ascendant. So the spouse demise was in the Moon, Moon Dasha. This is, of course, confirmed by the Navamsha. So this is about losing spouse wealth, being totally removed. And that happened after the demise of the second spouse, John. She was totally removed from that family and she didn't get the web, at least the full amount. And uh, she was really expecting that. We can see that Lagna Lord in 8 Mars, if there is some yoga related to that, then uh, Brihad Parashara Horashastra says that person is a thief because your focus is in other people's money, 8th house and Mars. This is your tactic, right? And here we have this Mars in the uh, Randramsha and with the eight lords. So the connection is very much there. In the Sylvester chart, in the second one, we see that there is the war between the Venus and Sun and the Venus is uh, losing here, right? And uh, it's a fourth lord and second house. So after his uh, mother was uh, remarried and uh, there was another children coming, there was uh, many friction in the family, second house. And uh, after this uh, conflict with the father, he decided to leave the family. So he was just leaving the um, family. And we can see how fourth lord and second house, the family, the mother, and um, that Venus and Mercury, it's interesting because it shows that it could be uncles, it could be other people who are taking care of of you, right? And uh, this yoga is also here present. And we can see also how the Karakas hit. He died because of AIDS. And the Venus uh, is ruling the immune system. So if Venus is weak in the chart, the person has uh, immune system weak. And we can appreciate how this Graha Yuda is showing both situations. We are going quickly chart by chart to appreciate how it is very nicely showing. And then we will apply some additional rules. So here we have a Venus is uh, losing to Saturn. This is the Benino Aquino III. Uh, he was the 15th president of Philippines. He was never married. So Venus and the seventh lord, right? Both house and the Caraca uh, were losing with the Saturn. Saturn is the 10th house. Maybe that was also the factor which uh, played an important essential role. Then we have this Arik Abidel. This is a very interesting Example, Lagna Lord is a Saturn. He's the professional footballer, one of the best. Lagna Lord in 8th house. So I was thinking, how this fully packed 
eighth house was taking a role and he had this uh, liver disease which was very serious we can see the leo sign is there and uh, he had this liver transplant uh, which was making the break in his career we also see that in Dida shamsa and uh, then because of the affair he had a uh, divorce, which was also quiet. It was not this uh, peaceful divorce. There was a big fight. This uh, lover was even threatened and uh, big, big, uh, big problems. So the eighth house is coming into four and the Lagna Lord Saturn defeated by the sun. So we could see that the disease is defeating the person, the Saturn. And then also we have Mercury defeating the sun. So also this leads to the divorce. The Eighth Lord, which is sustaining the relationship, is also defeated. So here we have this triple Graha Yuda. Now in the last chart of uh, Jewel Akans, we don't have a big biography about him, but we know that uh, he was the musician, entertainer. And in this chart, we have this Mercury, which is defeated, right? We don't have much information about fourth and seven. Uh, we know that he was married, but we know that he died from the complication of the surgery. What is the connection, right? What is the connection to disease when it comes to that Mercury? Because Mercury is defeated, right? This is also at Makaraka. So Rahu is an own sign. Every results of his karma will be delegated to Uchanata. So whatever Uchanata condition is there, that will be the function of the 12th house of the uh, hospital stay, right? Of the surgery. And Mercury is defeated. And Ketu, Ketu is the master, is the karaka of mistakes. So because of the complications, uh, he died, right? So this was also Atma Karaka in the sixth house in the disease and related to that. And as usual, of course, you need to uh, use other parts of the chart to confirm. And this is what we will be doing now. We will try to exclude some options based on the two rules, which I will show you how they are uh, working. Yeah, let's start again. Let's go back to that first chart. 11th house, right, was the focus. Also, the 11th lord was engaged. And uh, these are the winners, right? But the lagna is defeated. Now we can see that Mars and Sun, they don't have the best relationship. And Sun is suffering from Rahu and Saturn Trikona Yoga, right? So this is one yoga which we need to take into account. The other 11 houses about the money, right? So Jupiter. And we see that Sun and Saturn are in fourth and eighth from that Jupiter. This is also kind or type of affliction, which we cannot ignore here. Now, if we take Mars and Mercury in the Navamsha, because this will be very much related to that whole thing, and they are connected to the death of the second spouse, and also they are related to taking others' wealth or being somehow connected. We see that this eight house position is there, but we need to go methodically. So we need to ask, is it something related to the wealth? Is the 10th house or 10th Lord somehow touched or affected, right? And the sun is the tenth lord, right? In the Lagna. The Spositor is Mars and Mercury is in the Trikona, also aspecting it by Rasi Drishti. So whatever they are doing, they are touching, they are activating, they are triggering the sun. So therefore, we can say that because of the Karaka in the Rashi, and the position in the Navamsha, we can say, yes, this is about the wealth. Already from the Mercury in the 11th house, this is most likely this about the income, about the inheritance or about the spouse wealth. But now we have those additional information to exclude the options when we will be doing the chart analysis, the consultations, and these things will not unfold yet then uh, to get the clarity what will get hit. Now to the second uh, chart of Sylvester. He was the pioneering figure in the disco era, very much into entertainment. So the Venus very strongly there, but Venus is defeated. Moon is also very much hit by uh, Rahu, Mars and Saturn following the moon. So this is Madhika Yoga, this moon is afflicted. This is very important because fourth house has many elements like property or education or the comforts or vehicles. They may not be hit because their Karaka will be free of that blemish. But here we have both fourth and the moon is afflicted. And of course, also we need the Na Vamsha. And here we have the Venus is in the own sign, 
This is very important, right? And this is giving the results of uh, Jupiter. Jupiter is in the 12th house of uh, demise, right? So therefore we know that his immune system was hit and that whole thing was ultimately leading to his uh, death. We will see also the other chart, which will have the exact combination also through Uchanat. So therefore we know that we are on the uh, good path. On the next example of Benino Aquino III, we have that Saturn and the Venus. So it's 10th Lord conquering the 7th uh, Lord, right? So the relationship are suffering. And also Venus the Karaka is a hit. So in the Navamsha, do we have that confirmed? And we see that Venus is again giving results of Jupiter. Jupiter is the 7th Lord. So one could say, yes, but the Mercury in the Rashi, which is showing career, and Jupiter is also 10th Lord in the Navamsha. So that should affect the wealth, right? And profession. But we need to remember that the initial rule was that Saturn, 10th Lord, is overcoming the Venus, 7th Lord, right? And Saturn is also not very uh, afflicted because it's with only with Mars. It's also with Venus and Jupiter, right? So Saturn is winning. So therefore, we don't have that uh, Lordship confirmation. This is very important because otherwise you can get easily uh, swayed away by the other uh, levels of the chart. So Venus is losing and therefore the Venus Karaka and in the Navamsha we need to check the Seventh Lord. In the next example of Eric Abidal, we knew that the Saturn is uh, losing to Sun and then Sun is losing to Mercury, right? So it was about divorce, it was about the health also. So we need to check the Saturn and the Sun, right? Because this is the health. They are both in that yoga, both afflicted. So we can say, yes, it's health. Divorce, we also need to see the Saturn and uh, here we take the dispositor. So again, it's Saturn and Sun, so it's the same story, right? They are both afflicted, so we don't have much clarity. We just get confirmation, yes, it is about health, it is about the divorce. What about the Navamsha? Do we get some more clarity here? And I've changed the uh, Lagna to Gemini. This is because to... Uh, understand that he was married in Rahu Rahu. So it's not really possible with Taurus, with Gemini, Rahu is aspecting seventh house and seventh Lord Jupiter. And also the time when he got this break in career and all that stuff is much more understandable uh, with the Gemini Navamsha. But what if we change that to Gemini, what will happen to our analysis of the Graha Yuda or this planetary war? Then we have connection to this. We see that this Sun and Saturn and Mercury, all these three planets which are taking part in the Graha Yuda are in the sixth house in the Navamsha. And they are joined eight Lord. We know that it was his affair. So this is exactly the yoga for his affair. The Lagna Lord is there. And also we see that the uh, Saturn, which is the eight Lord, which is showing the divorce and also which is related to his uh, health, because it's both Saturn and it's both eight Lord in the Navamsha is also very important in health matters. So on the Karaka level and on the Navamsha level, uh, we have this confirmation. It's about divorce. It's about the health. We can see that the points related to the wealth were not really there, right? So that is the, also the difference between the eight house from the first example and this eight house. Right, because eight house will show wealth of others and inheritance, divorce and disease. So this is the uh, divorce and disease uh, chart. We can see the big difference uh, between the first chart and this one. Now, in the last chart of uh, Jewel Ekans, we can see 12th Lord is a row, right? It gives effects of that Mercury. This Mercury is defeated. What about the Karaka Saturn, right? Saturn, Karaka of the 12th house will be important. Is he also afflicted? And again, it gives results over Venus. And the Venus is afflicted in 8th house with Mars and aspected by Rahu and Saturn. So big, big affliction. Mars, Rahu, Saturn in the 8th house. By the way, affliction of Mars may also show complication of surgeries. The surgeries need to be repeated. There are some mistakes done. So this is also part of the Mars curse. And here in the chart, both are there, right? Now let's open the Navamsha and see what is happening. Now we need to get the confirmation from the Navamsha. Does it have the relationship to the 12 or 8? Is it about the health? 
right? Something to do with Saturn. We can see that 12th Lord is Moon with that Mercury. In the negative Moon Sun Yoga, aspected by Saturn, by Graha and Rasi Drishti. So all of these indications are pointing towards problems with the uh, hospitalization. This uh, needs to be, of course, confirmed with the Trim Shamsa chart, which I did. And also we got this confirmation there. So now we got these nice methods to exclude other options and be more sure what we can expect when analyzing the Grahayuda. By the way, in the Sylvester chart, in the second one, we also had the same combination. You see, the uh, problem was uh, Venus and Sun. Uh, Venus was an own sign in Dinavamsha and it got the uh, connection to Jupiter, right? Because Venus in own science gives results to Jupiter. Jupiter is on the 12, so it was about the wealth. Very interesting thing because 12th and 6th here are related in that Parivartana. And exactly in that Dasha, both he and his partner died. So we can see that both 12th house, his death and 6th house, death of the partner, were activated in the chart. Therefore, we are sure that the Cancer Lagna in the Navamsha is right and that whole methodology, how we arrived at those exact uh, elements uh, is also right. So what we've learned from all of these examples, first, that the Lagnesha when uh, defeated in the world, and we can see that the whole the, the person may feel defeated on the very deep level. It's not only one area which is hit or sacrificed, but the one may feel defeated as a person. Then to be able to exclude other options to get more clarity, uh, we need to employ the principles of Karaka and the Navamsha position. To be able to do that, we need to learn the formation of the yogas and afflictions. We are learning that very thoroughly on the course. So if you would like to uh, get the full understanding, then please consider joining the course. So for example, we saw how the Uchanat was a very important element. We have seen how the Malika, the malefics after the planet, how they were afflicting or malefics in D4 and 8 from the planet. Also, very important thing is that we cannot uh, devise the gem of the planet defeated because then you will be wearing with yourself that defeating vibe, which probably is not what you want to do. Forgot to add this Aruda level because the Aruda will show how it all happens. For example, in the first example, it was third from Aruda Lagna, which means that person was initiating that, right? It was like, uh, I'm fighting for all of this wealth uh, in that uh, situation, the chart when the affair was leading to big fight, it was in sixth from Aruda Lagna. This whole thing was in Leo, the Aruda was in the Pisces. In that chart when it was leading to death, the third from Aruda Lagna uh, was activated. So by employing another level of Aruda, you can understand what is the impact on yourself or how you are activated that whole uh, dynamic. So if you have Grahayuda in the chart, please see in the Deva Guru which planet is winning. Then you need to take that losing planet and see in which house and which lordship are related to that. Then you will get the whole palette of possibilities and then you need to exclude one by one. And you can do that how we did in this presentation by employing the Karaka and the uh, Navamsha principles. To be able to do that, you need to understand what is the meaning of the houses and the lordship and how to know which planet is afflicted, right? So on that basic level of the malefics joining or aspecting and also or more advanced level, you also need to understand the yoga formation for that. And uh, also the what are the karakas for houses, bhava karaka, right? Each house will have the fixed karaka, like for lagna is sun, for four is moon, for seven is Venus and for ten is Mercury. So uh, this knowledge you need to have uh, to be able to to uh, work with that. So this is the basic foundation you need to have to understand what the planetary war is doing with your life. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching till the end and being here with me on the channel. Join our Discord channel for nice, interesting conversation about Vedic Astrology. For more structurized knowledge, please consider buying the uh, Vedic course for one-on-one -on -one consultation when we are analyzing your chart with uh, work, health, relationship, all these yogas, vargas, dashas, and giving the remedies. Uh, hit me up with this email and we can schedule one for you. And uh, as you have seen, we have analyzed the Navamsha. But to be able to use the Navamsha, you need to rectify it first. So to learn how to do this, please consider watch this video here.